Hello seniors! Congrats! You've almost made it. Uh, we're almost done with the year. I'm getting ready to graduate. Uh, I'm Mr. Mack, if I haven't had you in class uh, over the past few years. Uh, it's nice to digitally meet you. Uh, and um, sorry that this year is kind of strange, huh? At least you'll have a really great story to top everyone else's senior year stories for the rest of your lives. <laughs> Uh, but last year, we started uh, this thing called How to Adult 101. I really enjoyed being a part of it then, so I'm excited that we get to continue it, only digitally, like everything else in our lives is right now. So I am going to be showing you guys some basic sewing skills. Uh, specifically, we're going to look at the button, uh, because you're going to come home from work one day wearing your nice business suit as CEO, you're gonna hit your sleeve on your car door and a button's gonna pop right off. Or you're getting ready to go for an interview, you pull your shirt out and you see that it's got a loose button on it. You're getting ready to go on a date, dress is missing a button and it's not fitting right. Whatever it may be, uh, buttons fall off all the time and they get loose all the time. So knowing how to repair it is pretty helpful. The nice thing is, it's really quick and it's really easy. So here's what you're going to need. First, the button. Uh, ideally, you'll use the original button. Uh, so if it falls off completely and you can find it, that's best case scenario. If you cannot find it, clothing with buttons, usually on the tag, will come with replacement buttons. So on the tag, it usually has uh, a replacement button or two because buttons always fall off. If you don't have the replacement buttons and you don't have the original button, you can always go to Joanne or Michael or some other craft or uh, hobby store and they will have different buttons. So you can either find one that's exactly the same or at least looks close enough that no one's going to notice. So button first. The next thing you need is needles. Now, I recommend having two needles, uh, one to sew and the other as your spacer. Uh, now, if you don't have two needles, if you've only got the one, that's perfectly fine. The spacer, which is the third thing you need, can be a needle, it can be a pin, a safety pin, a toothpick, a paper clip, uh, a hair pick, even if it's, if it's pretty thin. Anything that is pretty small and thin uh, works great as a spacer. Now the spacer, when you look at buttons, okay, when I hold the fabric level here, make sure I get, get it in front of the camera, when I hold the fabric level, I can actually come over here and I can pick this up just a little bit. Uh, make sure I'm not blocking it with my, uh, let's see if I can get a good angle there. There we go. And there is a little bit of space here between the uh, fabric the, the shirt itself and the, the button, all right? That little bit of space, that's what allows the button to actually fit inside of the buttonhole because fabric has some width to it. And if you just sew the button real tight onto the shirt, it's not gonna work. So we use a spacer and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. Uh, I use two needles. So I use a needle as my spacer, but again, you can use anything that's pretty thin and small. Next, you need some thread. Uh, the color of the other buttons. Okay, so this shirt, the thread is black, so I'm using black thread. And then you need a pair of scissors. Now, ideally, you will use uh, fabric scissors because they are going to give you a nice clean cut on your thread, but if you don't have fabric scissors, really any scissors work. Great. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to thread your needle. So take your thread, you pull off, uh, I spread my arms out, not all the way, just just about till they're bent. It gives me a pretty good amount of thread, probably a lot more than I need usually, uh, but I just like to have some thread to work with. And then you cut it. All right, so we're done with that roll of thread. This is the hardest part of sewing a button. It is taking this little thread and putting it through the eye of your needle, all right? So you'll 
all that you'll do is you'll just poke and push it right through. All right. Once you've pushed it through, the needle should hang on your thread just like that. All right. So that's the hardest part. Uh, and it is really annoying to thread a needle. Once you've done that, uh, I like to double up my thread, especially when I am uh, sewing a button because it makes it a little bit extra sturdy. So what I'll do is I will actually get both ends of my thread, okay? So both ends separately and I'll line them up. So got both ends here. Line them up so that they're about the same length and then my needle is down at the bottom. Now you don't have to do this. You can use just one thread uh, or, or just a single strand. Uh, that works just fine. You just tie a knot on the end of the needle and a knot on the back. Uh, I, I like to double up just for the tiny little bit of extra strength that it provides. Uh, the next thing you need to do is tie a knot into the back end of your needle. So the way that you'll do that uh, there's two ways you can. I'm going to show you both. The first one is if you pinch your fabric or, or your thread, sorry, and you wrap around. So you, so I've got, I've got the thread wrapped around my finger. Okay, so it's wrapped around, and then I just pinch it with my thumb. Okay. Uh, if I roll this off of my finger, I mean, there we go. I roll it off of my finger and then I pull it tight. All right. I pull it, oh, I didn't get it. All right, try that again this time without messing it up. Uh, I, you roll it off and you just pull. You'll end up, can you see the knot? You'll end up with a knot, okay? That's the easy way sometimes, as long as you can get it to work the right way. Uh, the other way to do this, and I double up again just, just to make sure that it's big enough that it's not gonna go anywhere. Uh, and that's just personal preference. The other way to do it is you create a, you create a very small loop at the end. So I just twist my, my thread so that I create a loop. Okay, pinch the loop with, with my fingers like this. And then you take the needle and you push it through the loop. All right, and when you pull it all the way through, it will a knot. So now I've got, I've actually got two knots in there now. All right, so I've got two knots and I'm just going to knot them together really fast. Great. So now I have my thread. Done with that. Uh, so I'll come back to my thread and my needle here in just a moment. The next thing you need to do is find where the button goes. So if the shirt has recently lost its button, okay, if this, or the clothing, whatever you're using. It will most likely have, and you can kind of see it, my camera's not super great, but if you look right by my finger, you can see a couple of dots here. Uh, you can actually see where the thread used to sit for the button. If you can't see it, that's totally fine. All that you will do is line up the button hole, so here's my button hole, with where you want the button to go. So you'll take the ends of your fabric and line them up. Then all you have to do is find where the button hole is for the button that you're trying to replace. And you can take your needle and push it through the middle of the button, of the buttonhole, okay? So see there, you can see I'm now pushed through the middle of my buttonhole and just remove that and now I know where the button needs to go so that I can place uh, my button. So once I've done that, once I've decided where my, where my button needs to go, I'll pull the, the, the thread through. Now I again like to make sure it's nice and secure. So I'm actually going to double up onto that same spot. This isn't necessary but it's uh, I like to do it just for my own security purposes. Um, I can double up onto that exact same spot, but before I finish pulling all the way through, okay, so I've got 
this loop. Lost it. Let's try this again. Uh, so I've got a loop here. I'm sure, I've actually got it. I can see it. Uh, this is just me creating a little bit of a lock uh, in the fabric itself. It just helps keep everything from coming undone. Not necessary, just adds a tiny little bit of extra uh, security. So I've got a loop here. I won't pull it all the way through just yet. I'll go back in one more time in that same spot. All right, so go back through one more time on that same spot. And I'm going to thread my uh, needle through this loop. Make sure it's not twisted on me. All right, thread my needle through this loop. And it's just going to create kind of a little knot in the thread itself. So I've done that. Now, what I'm going to do is make an X. So I have one dot. All right. And now I've got an X. So make a little X like that. That tells me where the button is going to go. All right, now a button hole, when, or a button, when you look at the holes, you know, it kind of forms an X itself. So the next thing I do is I place my button over top of my X, and I simply go through the first hole. All right, so all you have to do is just re repeat that same spot. You can set it on after, like that and I go through that first hole. It got tangled up in the back. This is why you don't want to use too much. All right, tangled up my thread a little bit in the back. All right, so once I've done that, I've got the button here. I'm going to go through the second hole diagonally. Uh, you can, if you want to get fancy, you can do separate patterns. Diagonal is the classic easiest way to go. So I push through diagonal. Now this time I'm not going to pull all the way tight. This is where the spacer comes in. So once I've got my button, okay, again I'm not going to pull it all the way tight. Once I've got my button here, I now have a loop coming out of the button. Looks like this, okay. I'm going to take my spacer. For me that's that other needle, but again if you want to use a paper clip, uh, a uh, safety pin, a bobby pin, something like that, that works great. And I'm going to make, I'm going to put that spacer underneath the thread in between uh, the holes that I've just done. Once I've got it on there, now I will pull that tight. So now see, the spacer is going to keep, uh, is going to keep itself there because the thread is holding it nice and tight against the button. Once I've got the spacer there, I can, I'll, I'll just hold everything where it's at and I'm going to keep, and I'm going to do the other two uh, buttonholes. So the two that I haven't gotten to yet, I'm going to go through those real fast. Again, keep everything nice and tight to keep that spacer where it needs to be. Just like that. And now you should have an X on the front of your button. Okay. Make sure you can see that X. Hopefully. Maybe it's too blurry. But, uh, so the spacer is underneath all of the thread. It'll hold itself on. You've got an X there. The next thing to do, so that's round one. You're going to do that five more times. Uh, which will just make sure that the thread doesn't go anywhere. So, we go through five more times. Last one. One more. All right. Now this, again, make sure that your button's on there nice and tight, nice and stable. It's not going to come off anytime soon. You're welcome to do it fewer times if you want. Uh, do at least three because you don't want it too thin, otherwise it's just going to snap again. So there, just like that. Once you've done that, this time, when I push my needle through, I'm not going to go through the button. 
So if you look here, make sure that you can see, I'm going to push it through, see how it's on the side, underneath the button now, as I push my needle through. Go through, I push it through, and I'm gonna pull it tight. Once I've pulled it tight, now I've got thread coming out the side, not underneath. Now I'm going to pull my spacer out. So I pull my spacer, and now I've got this nice little gap to make sure that the buttonhole goes through. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that, that thread that's here and I'm going to wrap it around real tight six times. Just like that, okay? That's gonna just, again, keep that nice and secure, keep it from breaking, keep it from going anywhere. Once I've wrapped it through, now you push it back through the bottom, pull it tight, all right? And now you make a knot. So the way that I do this is on the back side over here. All right, uh, I will. Interesting, I sewed in. Okay, there we go. Uh, on the back side over here, uh, I will actually go back through, very similar to what, to what I did at first. I'll go back through over here, uh, not through the button, off to the side, I'll pull it out and I'll go back in on itself really quick. All right, so that I have got a loop on this side. Got my loop, I'll pull it a little bit tighter than I, what I've got, what I'm showing right now. Uh, pull it just a little bit tighter. I've got a loop over here and now I will simply thread it through. I'm actually going to do it twice and then pull everything nice and tight. Like that. Go back through underneath that thread that we just did. Uh, yep. Go underneath that. Okay. So that little loop that I just did, I'm going to go underneath that loop and then thread it through one final time. Like this. So there's a loop, thread it through one final time, and pull it tight. And that gives me my thread. So now you cut off all the excess in the back. So cut off anything that's still sticking up. So from the original, like that. And now I've got a nice, beautiful new button. No one would ever know that you lost it. It's on there nice and tight. And it's gonna sit nice and snug in your button hole. Just like that.